What is up, everybody? It's Sam, and we are back with another episode of Pessimistic at Best, the podcast. And I have my amazing friend Abby here with me today. Hey, Abby. Hey, Sam. I, you can't see me waving on this format, but just know that I'm, you know, so excited to be here <laughs> <laughs> with my hand gestures. Definitely. No, we're doing this over Zoom today, but I'm so excited. I mean, I literally, I haven't seen you since what, like June, was it? Which is crazy. I know, but for us, that's actually like pretty recent considering we can go just like years on end without seeing (laughs) each other, which is is sad, but you know, we make it work. Well, and I will say, I feel like honestly, all of our study abroad friends, I feel like whenever we get together, it feels like I actually haven't, it feels like I saw you guys like last week, even though it's been like two years. (laughs) Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, that's what happens when you just have like the silliest, best little friend group, you know? (laughs) Well, yes. For those of you who don't know, Abby and I actually met during study abroad. We both studied abroad in London, which was I would say the time of our lives. And I mean, that's like probably what everyone says when they study abroad, but for us, it's true. <laughs> oh, no. I I would say that like my life has been just consistently downhill since yeah. then. And I'm worried because there's still so much time to go. <laughs> oh my gosh, 100%. Well, something I think is still so funny because I was just reminiscing on it today in preparation for the pod. And I was thinking about literally the day that we met you was when. And the only, at least I think it was the only one that we did. It was like a program specific little travel endeavor that you could do. <laughs> so we were in London for only a few weeks at this point. And then our program had a couple like, I mean, they were basically like class trips that you could sign up to do. And so we decided to, Molly and I decided to do the one to um, Liverpool. And so we hopped on the bus, we made it all the way there. And then Abby <laughs> <laughs> missed the fucking bus. How did you even end up getting there? Because I am just like so glad you remember this story because sometimes it seems like an experience that like I I was alone for. Like I was like like no one else will believe me. But basically, yes, I had signed up to go see Liverpool. You know, huge fan of the Beatles. Thought it seemed like a fun time, and I didn't know anyone on the study abroad program. Like. Molly and Sam had each other, but I was just like the lone like Mizzou journalism yeah. kid there. So I was like, maybe I can meet some friends. So I was like all excited for this trip, but I had ended up going out the night before we were leaving on an extremely early morning bus to Liverpool with our other study abroad friends, Lauren and Kelsey. And I just like just completely missed that bus. Like there was like no, <laughs> there was no hope for me um, in that moment. And so I woke up and I was like, you know what? I still kind of want to go to Liverpool. Like, I don't know if anyone will go back there with me. And so I like was in cahoots with the the guy who was like in charge of the trip. And I ended up like <laughs> buying my own train ticket up to Liverpool. I fully missed like 90% of the activity. Oh, literally, you got there like at night. <laughs> like, it was just insane. And half of it was like literally a bus tour too. So we like, like before we even actually got anywhere, we were just like on the bus for a few hours kind of stopping looking out windows and like the lady with the umbrella was telling us cool facts about the things we were seeing and so like all of that you were just not there for which is so classic if you you ever meet Abby (laughs) oh but it ended up being really fun I mean like by the time you got there, because we went out that night and that's when that ridiculous man who looked just like Jack Black was at that tequila bar and he was like, 45, 45. <laughs> and he literally ordered 45 tequila shots, which is just absolutely insane. I mean, to, to date, this that was like one of the most fun nights of my life. I'm so <laughs> glad that I made that insane decision to like trek up to Liverpool alone. <laughs> Um, And I really have like such fond memories of that, that I had a friend who was planning like a pretty long trip around the UK and she decided to consult with me after she'd already booked everything. And she was going to spend like four nights in York or something like that. And I was like, no, no, no. Like if you're trying to get North, like you need to stop through Liverpool. And she was like, it was like the best, the highlight of her trip too. (laughs) She like loved it so much. So highly recommend to everyone, no matter what the circumstances are. Yeah. You got to make your way to Liverpool, catch that train. (laughs) 
fine if you missed the bus. No worries. <laughs> no, it was so much fun. And it was honestly a way crazier place than I was expecting. I almost feel like, and you tell me if you think this is a fair comparison, but I feel like it's kind of like the Jersey Shore of the UK or something. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Like when people were like prepping me to go to Liverpool, like it, no one said anything about like history and culture. Literally, the only tip I got was that the women there wear so much makeup and you have to be prepared for it. (laughs) And they were not wrong. (laughs) No, not at all. They're also like, you probably won't be able to understand them. So it's a hundred (laughs) percent Jersey Shore in the UK. (laughs) Oh my God. And like everyone has fake tans. Like, yeah, the accents are just a little bit different. That's about it. Otherwise I see no differences. (laughs) But yeah, I was just thinking about that and I was like, oh my God, I kind of forgot that that happened, but that is the most classic Abby story. And like, of course that was our introduction to you, but it became this wonderful blossoming friendship. So I'm so thankful that you decided to make it up there. Me too. A hundred percent. All worth it in the end. Well, and I also think it's so funny because I mean, obviously everyone, when you go and study abroad, the dream is just to like move back. That's all you ever want to do. And like everyone's convinced they're going to, but most of us never do. And you actually did for a full year. And I think that that's just so awesome. Like I was so jealous at the time and so envious. And I was like, oh my God, she actually made it happen. Because also, I mean, moving to London is no small beans like it's fucking impossible and you have to get a visa and do all these things so I'm still very glad that you had that experience (laughs) yes that is the dream (laughs) that was a hundred percent another like very Abby endeavor I would say um I wanted to, to go there so badly but it was basically like you had to get married, which like, I didn't have anyone to marry me, (laughs) or you had to like, get some awesome job. But I had like a journalism degree. So that wasn't gonna happen. Or you could become a student. And I was like, well, you know, I'm like, my my motto while I was studying abroad was like, I'm not here to learn. So I'm definitely like, not the classic, (laughs) like higher education pursuer. Um, But I was like, you know what, if I can find a scholarship, maybe I'll do it. And so I spent like hours on Google. I was like borderline like dark web. Like I was like page two and three (laughs) of the Google search results. And I found this like crazy scholarship at the worst school in the entire United Kingdom. Like they had definitely gotten in trouble (laughs) for like, (laughs) they had gotten in trouble for like um, scamming the government with like accepting too many international students who like then never showed up to class to get like subsidized so it was like it was definitely a mess but then yeah it all I when I went I thought I was probably getting like scammed I was gonna like show up at the airport and people were gonna like put a bag over my head and like I would never see my friends and family again but it was that didn't happen so it all it was another good journey but my favorite part of it is that do you remember the bagel burgers yes oh my gosh of course iconic how could I ever forget best meal of my entire her life like to this day would be my dying meal um yeah just it was like the best uh, street food ever and I like kind of weirdly stayed in touch with the guy who owned it over like Facebook messenger yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it's because I was like his business ended up going under and I was like the only true fan that he yeah. had <laughs> so. which is honestly wrong because those bagels were like some that was like the best thing I have ever tasted truly and didn't he even give you a little jar of his like secret sauce a jar of his mom's homemade apple chili jam when I left like it was a beautiful friendship and then when I was moving back there I was like hey I'm actually like headed back over there he's like oh do you need a job I'm working at a donut shop right now like we can I can definitely (laughs) hook you up and I was like you know what I actually really do need a job so within like three days of being there I like got this job at this donut shop basically never saw that man again (laughs) (laughs) god oh my god yes I forgot about him wow and yeah also another fun fact about Abby is that she's literally obsessed with burgers would you say that's still true is that like your favorite food of all time still Oh, absolutely. I went on a date recently and the guy was like, yeah, I was like telling like my friends about our date. And I was like, yeah, she talked about hamburgers for like an hour. They're like, no, she didn't. He was like, no, she absolutely. It was so long. Oh my God. I'm love. I love that. That's just like a part of your personality pitch at this point. Like you might as well let the people know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm like, you know what? I can, I can, I can F with some, you know, like non- 
like non meat burgers too, but it's like you just have to know that like I will at least have to be getting some like beyond patties somewhere along the Absolutely. line. <laughs> yes. Well, actually, next time you come to Madison, um, there is this new place and you would fucking love it. It just opened up, it's called Settle Down Tavern. This is not sponsored, I'm just obsessed. James and I go like once a week and they have like this delicious smash burger and I cannot get enough of it. I don't know what sauce is on there. I don't know. It's just like I crave it. I crave it all the time. It's all I want. Okay. Well, absolutely. That sounds incredible. As long as we can go to Gotham in the morning, yes. because I still you dream about know. those bagel sandwiches. Yeah. That is maybe my favorite place. I think if I die, I hope that Gotham is like heaven or something like that's just where I want to end up because those bagels, I, Abby, the way that it, so they only do, we haven't been able to go in there any, like recently they haven't reopened since COVID, but they're doing delivery and takeout. The way that I drop $40 <coughs> on two bagels, like once a week, it's just absolutely insane. And like, I write them love letters. Like I write them reviews. I am always taking them on my Instagram. Like I am like, I will do, I will, I live and die for these bagels. <laughs> I mean, honestly, good bagel shops are really hard to come by. You have to support your local you bagel do. shops you while really you can. Do. But you are definitely the one who taught me about putting cream cheese on like bagel, sam- like egg sandwiches. Mm-hmm. And that has been like a game changer. Oh, Everywhere so I go, I've always got to gotta add that cream cheese. So. Oh, I love the way we rub off on each other. <laughs> 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 well, yes, but I'm excited to just hear about like what's new with you. I mean, I know you like literally just got back from a work trip. I'm I'm obsessed with the fact that you were at like a golfing event because that is not very on brand. I will say (laughs) (laughs) not at all. It was so funny. My friends were messaging me. They're like, Abby, what are you doing? (laughs) I saw it on your social and I was like, why though? Like I need to understand. (laughs) It was like our, our biggest client is like this like private golf club in Florida, which is like so random because I work at like a small agency in the middle of Missouri. So like really still not quite sure how that came to be, (laughs) but they were hosting like an LPGA tournament. And so I got sent down um, to like write the captions, which was a really hard job for me because I don't know anything about golf so I'm just like I'm just like wow these women are so good (laughs) like I'm just (laughs) reaching for like grasping at straws here I definitely I know like one golf term and I think it's par and I don't know anything else well and then it's confusing because it's like in my day-to-day life I say like above par like that's above average which like usually is good but it's like in golf below par is good so like I couldn't even really be like talking is about it? par that much right yeah right <laughs> not but, qualified yeah <laughs> no not at all I was yeah like just trying to keep everything so generic um but it actually ended up being super fun I picked up the lingo at the end I know you know birdie is like best case scenario besides a hole in one I think no wait maybe that's eagle it's been I've been out of the game <laughs> Bogies are bad. I know that for okay, sure. Sure. That's an easy one to remember. Yeah. It's kind of like, yes, bogus. sure. Oh, that's such a, that's such a good way to think about it. <laughs> yeah. So I really need to brush up on my golf skills again, even though I've only been out of it for a week, but it was actually super fun. Like these women athletes were just so incredible. So that was kind of fun to see. And like going into it, I didn't know any anyone like I didn't know anything about golf I didn't know like any players and then like a day into it I'm like I would die for Christina Kim like I'll like fuck you up if you say anything bad about my girl you know so it ended number up one pretty, fan yeah yes. <laughs> it was a pretty fun experience but um yeah it was definitely good to come back you know at the end of it too I do I when I was younger, I really didn't get why people would complain about like work travel because I thought that seemed so cool that you could like go places for your job. But then I do realize it kind of sucks being away from home. And like I only travel to like Tampa. So that's not really sure. yeah. a fun <laughs> destination. That's so fair. Yeah. But I know you've done traveling for work. Like, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, no, I, I have mixed feelings about it because it, it there's still something that feels like glamorous about it, which is so stupid. But like, that's kind of why it feels fun. But then also, even if you do go to a cool place, like you don't actually get to explore, you're working the whole time. So I mean, and maybe that's not always true. But I feel like for the from at least for me, that has been the case. And like, so even if I go to a place that like, 
I mean, I don't always go to the most fun places either. Like my last work trip was to Vegas, which like when you're there for I work, mean, it's a lot different than when you're there for play. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> when you're stone cold sober in Vegas, it's not always that much fun to be honest, but that's okay. And then you just like, don't even get to do all of the fun things. Like even I had a work trip to LA and i I don't know. I just like I've only been into L.A. a few times. So I was like, oh, it'd be kind of fun to like poke around a little bit and just see what this place is about. And all I saw was like dirty streets and a couple office buildings. And it was like, (laughs) this is not what I had in mind. (laughs) Absolutely. It's yeah, it's not the best. I've even heard of people like they get off the airplane and they're in the Ubers like to their hotel and they have to work. And I was like, okay, we should really reevaluate this. Maybe yeah, we should build in like a couple fun days. Yes, right. Yeah. Trips. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Extend my flight, please. And I would like to have a full day for exploring. But I mean, and like there was, I've even heard like sometimes you literally get there and like maybe your hotel's attached to the airport and like you don't even leave. Like that just sounds like an absolute nightmare. Oh, <laughs> like, that what is, is so, even the point? <laughs> that is so sad. And for us, so, like in Colombia, we're two hours away from the nearest major airport, which just makes everything horrible like yeah. on the travel days. And this last one, I was going down with my friend Bree and we were meeting with, up with our coworker, Emma, um, who had been there for a few days. And so our flight was like kind of late on set on like Wednesday. And so we had to like leave at 2 30. We like get to the airport. We're like working at the airport, blah, blah, blah. Like get on the flight. We land at like 10 30. We it takes an hour and a half to get our rental car. And then we like put in the address of our Airbnb. And like Brie and I, I swear both of our phones like took us to the same place. But when we get there, and it was like 35 minutes away from the airport. So like right in line with what we thought it would be. Well, when we get to where our phone is telling us, like we are not seeing this house anywhere. And it's like a lime <laughs> green house. Oh, and no. so we it should be very visible. We're driving around the block for like 20 minutes. We're like, it has to be here. It has to be here. I at one point I'm like getting out of the car and like wandering I'm like it's hiding behind another <laughs> building like what is happening here then Emma texts us and she's like hey like did you guys like get here okay and we're like no Emma we're so we're so lost we can't find this house anywhere like can you walk outside so that we can see you and like find this goddamn house <laughs> and she's like yeah okay I'll like send you my location too well then we pull up her location and it's 35 minutes away oh from God, where no. we are So it was, there were fully two addresses within 30 minutes of each other that were literally identical in Tampa. Like, I'm like, of course, I hate Florida. I'm sorry if anyone is like a huge fan. That is like the last place. I would move to like Alaska forever. I would move to like Alabama, Mississippi. Like I would move anywhere before I would move (laughs) to Florida. (laughs) And so then we have to drive our ass in 35 minutes again to get to the Airbnb. It's like way past midnight at this point. And we're like so close. We're so close to our final destination. And then we just see lights and Brie gets pulled over for going like 16 miles an hour. The speed limit. And like, it was just so funny because it was so late. Like, Usually it made me think that people were like being really responsible and like drinking and driving or something. Like they were like coming back from like a crazy night, but he like, he like, took one look at us and was just like, these girls are not having a good time. Like there's nothing <laughs> illegal going on here besides the fact that you're going so fast towards your Airbnb. So luckily he let us off with a warning, but it was just like the funniest, like everything that could have gone wrong on that journey oh, didn't 100%. go wrong. <laughs> yeah, no. And I feel like that's like the spirit of work travel these days, especially I feel like since like getting back into it post COVID kind of like, I don't know what it is, but flights are always delayed. Like things get, you miss your, you miss your layovers. Like everything just seems like it gets messed up. I don't know. Like it's so bad. And I, I don't miss that piece of it. I haven't had a work trip in a bit. My last one was in August. Um, and that's like, okay with me. Like it is sometimes fun, but I feel like it does get old. I don't know. And I, I'm saying that and I'm 25. <laughs> oh, I know. I trust me. I'm like sitting here talking about retirement already. And I've oh like gosh, been same. working for like two years. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's just hard to be us. I also actually do feel like it's hard to be 25. And maybe that's, you know, some people might find that annoying to say, but I, it has never been harder to be alive than it is right now. <laughs> no, Sam, I feel so validated hearing you say that I 25 has been 
honestly so horrible. I'm so yeah. excited to turn 26, except for the fact that that means I'm going to have to start paying for my own health insurance now, which just makes me like hate being alive even more. Oh my God, I know. Yeah. I actually already am on my own health insurance plan and it is a joke. And I, because basically the only reason I had to do it a little bit early, my dad's company like basically found out that I was being offered health insurance through my job so that if I, if he, like if I'm still a dependent, even though I have access to health insurance, they would just fine him every month. So he was like, okay, I'm not doing that. So even find that out that I feels like they over no someone idea. at like a coffee shop saying like yeah did you know sam yeah and you're like you offered her health insurance and the wrong person over no that's what i'm saying like who is spreading rumors about me i don't know <laughs> but yeah so that so i had all my dirty laundry aired essentially and then my dad was like yeah you have to get your own health insurance so then i i whatever i signed up for it through work and then i they also have like a retirement program it has been nine months and all I have to do is send one email and I cannot get myself to sign up for it and that is just money I'm wasting like it's like a simple IRA or you know one of those something along those lines and I it is like my my goal by the end of the year to actually follow through with being an adult and just signing up for it I don't know it's just like a bunch of words I don't know and I can't so oh, it's so hard. And then like thinking about, you know, the way that things are going, will we ever even be able to retire anyways? Right. You know, it's like, there's the no incentive. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. But yeah, no, that's exciting about, I mean, it sounds like you're transitioning. Do you know what you're doing next? Yes. So, you know, right before the work trip, I put in um, my notice at my job, which was like interesting timing for sure. I thought they were going to like revoke my travel card, which I wouldn't have been like the most heartbroken about. Sure. But in the end, it was it all was super fun. But yeah, so I actually got a new job in Kansas City. Look I'm at working you. at another creative agency. So yeah, that should be super fun. Looking forward to that. I start on December 10th. Okay. And then I will like work remote for a little bit before I, until I get like all my ducks in a row with moving over to Kansas city. So, you know, going to try to live the big city life, um, <laughs> definite air quotes there is I'm literally be living in Kansas. My relatives are like, can we start calling you Dorothy? Um, oh my God, of so, course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like definitely excited for a change though. They also actually offer health insurance, which my old like company really didn't even have. So oh, that's, yeah. you know, important just as a soon to be 26 year old. Very true. Um, but it'll definitely be interesting because I have lived in Kansas city once before the summer after we studied abroad, I had an internship there. And I fully lived on a twin size air mattress in a sorority house (laughs) for an entire summer. So I'm gonna I'm really hoping to have like at least like a a real mattress on the floor this time around. But we'll see what happens. I think that's a realistic goal. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, that's so funny. How far away even is that from Columbia? I actually don't know. So it's like two hours. So it'll be nice that I can still like stay in touch and like see all my like friends from um, Columbia. I definitely was thinking I was going to move to like some more obscure East Coast city. I was really obsessed with the idea of Philadelphia for like a solid 10 days. (laughs) But then... (laughs) But then, you know, Kansas was calling and I just you I had an answer. Call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. I also had like a Philly um, sort of like, I would say it was also about a week, you know, a solid 10 days um, where it was just on the radar. I was like, you know, that's like the closest thing you can get to New York without it being New York. And I was like, maybe we'll do it. And then I, and then, uh, you know, I'm here in Madison still and have always been. So that's fine. But <laughs> I mean, there must be some sort of like Venn diagram between like people who studied abroad in London and like people who are obsessed with the idea of Philadelphia yeah. it does that's <laughs> what, like, my exact thought I was like you know what I can't I just don't think I can do New York I think I'm just like a little bit too midwestern at my core right. um as much as I wish that I I was chic and cool and you know <laughs> like had grit I just yeah. don't percent. <laughs> well and actually fun fact um Oh, wait, no, it wasn't in London. I had my first ever Philly cheesesteak. When we were studying abroad, I actually had it in, it makes absolutely no sense, but I had it in Copenhagen. Molly and I were coming out of this 
really, really insane, like, club. It was, I don't even know how to describe it. It was, like, the most grungy place I've ever been. We, like, stole a six-pack from behind the bar and were just, like, chugging beers. It was, like, (laughs) filthy. Like, this place was filthy. And we were with, the people we had gone out with were all people from our Airbnb. And it was, like, this one guy who wouldn't stop talking about his tattoos and this other guy who was a full-on pickpocket. And he was, like, 40. I was gonna say, I remember you guys were friends in a kleptomaniac. (laughs) (laughs) And we were with those people and we left and there was like a little food truck outside and we were all about to head back to because we were all staying at the same place our little hostel and um and there was a Philly cheesesteak food truck outside and Molly and I were starving so we got one I have no idea if it if it was an authentic Philly cheesesteak by any means but it was delicious (laughs) oh I mean I'm sure it was I feel like an authentic Philly cheesesteak it's just it's really all the same right true like how can you mess that up yeah yeah. (laughs) (laughs) so but yeah that's kind of the closest I've ever gotten to living in Philly and it was um it was literally overseas (laughs) but it does sound weirdly you know like parallel I mean all but I was really in getting into like Philly reddits and everyone's like yeah this city is just like full of trash like it's so <laughs> filthy <laughs> um so and there's obviously a lot of Philly cheesesteak so I would think, feel like Copenhagen is maybe like a sister city yeah honestly at this point it's just like you must relocate from one to the other and it's natural <laughs> progression <laughs> No, but that's exciting. I'm excited for you. So what is your new agency supposed to be like? And what made you make the switch? I am just curious. Was it like all the health insurance? Because I mean, honestly, that is important. But yes, well, it was the health insurance. And just I felt like I was making no money. Like I was making the same going into 26 as I was at like 22, which just felt like wrong. (laughs) So I wanted and I mean, I think it is very true that like the only way to get a significant amount of more cash is to switch companies, which definitely sucks if you, you know, like you're where you're at more or less. And I also just like felt like I was done with Columbia. I felt like I dated everyone there was to date there. <laughs> and there were like no more job opportunities. So I'm like, you know what, maybe it's time for me to leave. <laughs> we need a new pool of people and a raise. That's all you can ask for. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So just let that be a message if anyone's feeling stuck and hitting a quarter life crisis. Like it's okay to want to to go after a new pool of people in a race absolutely (laughs) yes you deserve it no 100 percent. I know and that is so true about just like getting more money because otherwise you grow so slowly at at the same company yeah it's like a thousand dollars a year and it's like okay that's like 50 bucks a month like right yeah I I, thanks I guess I will spend that on one dinner like what are you talking about I will literally spend that on two bagels bagels. yeah Oh my God, literally. It's so tough. (laughs) But that's good. I'm excited for you. So then what do you think in terms of like timeline? When are you, when are you hoping to move? Well, I'm trying to push off like paying double rent for as long as possible. If anyone's considering moving to Columbia, Missouri, it's impossible to get out of your leases in that town. So just like a heads up. Um, So I am thinking maybe like February, March, they were like pretty flexible with it. So yeah, I'll start in like December and then yeah, hopefully maybe by like mid-February I'll have something figured out. I am looking for a roommate. I know most people are like trying to live by themselves at this point in life, but I am so pro like find the cheapest rent possible. Like even if that literally means sharing a room with a stranger in a sorority house and like not having any (laughs) furniture. (laughs) So I'm like really trying to like ride that wave as long as I can. Um, so yeah, hoping I can find like a cool roommate. Um, but if not, I'll just, you know, get a studio or something like that. No, I respect that. I also feel like no matter what, it's a good way to meet people. Like, obviously you have to hope that you like them, but if you don't like them, maybe you like their friends. So that's all that matters. (laughs) That is so true. And it's like, even if you get like drinks together one time, like at least that was like plans for one night. Exactly. (laughs) 
an <laughs> automatic social calendar situation. That's all you really need. Yeah, I know. I feel that moving is kind of hard. It's like, I mean, I haven't done it in a very, very long time, but it's on my radar right now. Um, just cause I've been living here for fucking ever. So we'll see. I haven't decided yet, but I know that it's like around this time of year, maybe it's a little bit later in winter that my apartment will start asking if I want to resign. So I'm just trying to like, you know, prepare my answer. <laughs> so, well, you have the best apartment in the history of the world. So I feel like that is a hard decision. It uh, is. No, I actually am obsessed with my apartment. It's like the best part of still living in Madison. And it is a big, it, like it's on, it's on the cons list of moving because I'm like, I don't know if I'll ever find as cute of an apartment for the price that I pay. Not that it's cheap by any means, but like Madison is probably cheaper than anywhere else I would go. So. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, uh, you are speaking to like the number one fan of college towns in the Midwest. Yeah. So like, I <laughs> totally get it. <laughs> and where, what's on your list? I feel like you've always talked about Chicago, right? Yeah. And my company actually has an office at Chicago. So like stars are sort of aligning there. I mean, it's not a real office. It is a, we work, but that still is a something. Um, cause it's hey, you either... know what? interesting documentary. As long as you yeah. don't get into we work corporate, <laughs> I think you'll be fine. <laughs> Literally. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I kind of have to see cause it's there or my company also has not that I would have to maybe move to these places. We do so much remote work now, but it's nice to have a place like a home base to go to and you know, the option to socialize if you want it. Well, and I feel like that's such like, like now I don't know how else to make friends besides through work. Like how the fuck I'm not joining a club. Like, what do I look like? I (laughs) don't even have any hobbies. Like, I don't know. Don't even get me started on the hobbies things. I'm like, okay, yeah, if I don't do sports and like, I, I'm really bad about organized reading. So like, I can't even really join (laughs) book clubs. It's like, you're just shit out of luck. No, yeah, no, we can relate on that because there are even a couple of people that I work with now who all do like this, like rec sports league. And it's like ultimate Frisbee of all things. And I was like, you guys, everyone's like, Oh, you should come join. And I'm telling you, you do not want me on that team. Like the way I am uncoordinated is not even funny. Like I don't want to, I just have no desire. Oh, I'm exactly the same way. And then my problem is that I'm like not competitive at all, which I think can come across as like kind of like demeaning to the people who are playing the sports. I'm like, are we done yet? Like, can we go to the brewery? (laughs) That's what I'm saying. I'm just here for the after drinks. You know what I mean? Like nothing else. I'll actually just meet up after the game's over. (laughs) Can I just be like the cheerleader or something or like the water boy? It doesn't matter. But like, I don't want to be involved. (laughs) I know and it's so tough like even James he like joined like a climbing gym for a bit which is something uh, people our age love to do and I was like I know he keeps saying like maybe that's a way for you to make friends because now here I am in Madison and like all of my friends have left which I mean I get why they're heading out but (laughs) and then he's like well join the climbing gym and you can come with me no like I just don't even want to do that and I first of all I don't really understand how you make friends while you're doing that because you're just like you're staring at a rock wall. You're not looking at the people around you. It doesn't, there's no alcohol involved. (laughs) It doesn't make any sense. (laughs) Maybe it's like the trust. Like, are they spotting each other? But then it's like, you kind of like fuck up one time and like you're banned from the gym. Like someone could have gotten seriously injured. Like that doesn't feel like a solid plan either. (laughs) No, and then no one wants to be your partner anymore. I don't even know. So I don't think I'll be doing that. So I don't, we have to like, like what is a normal way for people to make friends? I truly don't know and I've considered like you know the girlies do like bumble bff and I haven't I've never done anything like that but I'm getting desperate (laughs) I mean I have always loved bumble bff when I went to London and didn't make friends but like within the first 20 minutes like I did when I studied abroad (laughs) I like became really desperate and downloaded the app and I actually like made one good friend on it who actually introduced me to like my then boyfriend. So I was joked that that was like the only dating app that ever worked for me was Bumble (laughs) VS. So I really like it. I have a friend who just moved to Denver um, and she like has made like a lot of her friends. It's so funny. She's talking about moving in with one of them. She's like, yeah, I'm thinking about like getting a place with my Bumble BFF. So it's definitely like a a wholesome, like meet cute, I would say. Totally. Um, But the problem is I... I would be hesitant about using it in some places, which may sound really 
like uppity or like maybe that would sound bad but essentially like I don't know who's on Bumble BFF in Columbia Missouri do you know what I'm saying and it's like I don't know like how much I want to find out it just feels like it could be kind of scary (laughs) no that is so fair yeah it's like I've seen who's on the dating apps and it's terrifying and so it's just like I don't know I uh, so I but I think that when you're moving to like bigger cities where like there's more young people moving there like regularly it's like a really good tool I'm definitely the only one I as someone with no hobbies um have found that's what I'm saying and then you can like be you can be straight up on there and say you don't have any and that you can be honest which I like (laughs) absolutely yeah um yeah it can definitely be fun but I always say like you just really need like one friend and that they can introduce you to their friends right um so like when I'm thinking about like places to move I'm like okay do I have like one or two people I could like go and get drinks with or something and then you can just like it it, I feel like it naturally expands from there but the thought of moving someplace and not knowing like a single soul like the older I get the more terrifying that becomes Uh, yeah that's when you have to find hobbies and that's just not in the cards (laughs) because otherwise that is literally what I bank on is like I just want to be absorbed into your friend group I'm not asking for much I see that you guys already have a little situation that's working out here I just want to be a part of it like (laughs) Absolutely. Yes. And then it's like, how like much do I have to beg? You know, it's like, I don't know like what the appropriate I know. etiquette is there. And you still want to seem cool. And like, you know, I feel like it is funny because sometimes it is kind of like dating where you're like, okay, I don't want to seem desperate here, but I am. So I'm just kind of trying to figure out a good in between. <laughs> and it's like, what's the like way to like, show that you're desperate without being so like forthcoming about it because yes. it's like you know if you're dating it's like okay I'll wear something that's like a little low cut or you know I'll like <laughs> I just not like a little bit too many times but then it's like I don't know if you're trying to find friends like that those aren't the same tools that you would use absolutely uh, not they don't care about your low cut shirts I don't know what they do I just feel like I like go overboard with jokes I'm just like trying to be hilarious and make myself appealing in that sense or like what I don't even know or like I'll pay for the bill something like that <laughs> <laughs> don't you worry I've got this round of drinks everybody <laughs> You sound exactly like me on dates. So I mean, even on Bumble BFF, we would be fast friends for sure. I love it. That is so good to hear. Yeah, no, it's something I might have to try. I also feel like it's one of those things where using it in like the town that I've lived in for literally all of my life, I would feel really silly because so I just it has to wait until I move. I'm just like bound for having absolutely no friends until I leave this until I leave this way. So where did all of your friends go? Like are they all flocking to the same location that you can kind of follow them to? Or are they like you have one friend in every city, which is how I feel like I'm at. But you I know, have, with like with like 10% of the cities. <laughs> right, literally. No, 100 percent I feel like it's a little bit of both. Like I definitely have people moving all over, but there are a couple hot spots. And like there are unfortunately hot spots I don't have that much of a desire to move to. I feel like, like you said, everyone is moving to Denver. I don't know what it is. Everyone's moving there. And like I it's see, I don't know, like it's fun. I like it. I've gone out to visit multiple times now, but I, one, don't ski. So I don't have any intent. Like, what will I do literally for six months while you guys are all skiing? <laughs> I mean, you you can do what I would do and like just kind of like spike your hot chocolate in the lounge yeah. and read a bunch of people <laughs> magazines. But like, is that worth the cost? I'm not sure. <laughs> Buying a membership and I'm just like in the cafe or whatever the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't even know. But um, and then I also have a lot of friends that are moving to Dallas, which I have actually never been. But it just does not. I don't know. It's never been on the list. Austin, I loved when we went like I loved it. So like maybe I would do that. But also it's hot and I hate being hot. I mean, you're like it's like you're taking all the words right out of my mouth. I would say I would be shocked if you ever moved to Dallas. Yeah, right? It's just not. Yeah, I don't think that would not be on for you. <laughs> okay, you get me. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> and so your office, so you could move to Chicago and stay with your company, or what's the other place that you guys have? Oh, my God, it's L.A., and I also have no designs uh, on moving to L.A., so. <laughs> yeah, no, just check that one off the list yeah. real quick. <laughs> no, thanks. 
<laughs> uh, it's so hard and it's really overwhelming I think to think of like moving anywhere in the like it's like you could hypothetically go pretty much anywhere but that it's like you need to narrow down the choices a little oh, bit I know like that's why I always end up just like in Missouri or Kansas yeah. because I just like, I'm at a lot <laughs> somewhere to go <laughs> yeah well I have to say I mean Missouri was a very crazy place I had never been until I visited you when we were in school um but I'm glad that I, I'm glad that I went. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I'm glad that I went and I never have to go yeah. again. <laughs> I mean, you say the word and I will come visit you in Kansas City. My mom actually sometimes does art shows in, in and around Missouri. So perhaps we'll come for a visit. <laughs> okay, well, definitely let me know next time she's there because that would be super fun um, to at least to see her, you know, and take a selfie and send it to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And my dad is actually retiring soon so I think they're planning on doing more shows down south like all year because of course there it stays a little warmer so yeah that's so exciting I know except my dad retiring kind of freaks me out and also I'm envious (laughs) oh absolutely I know my dad is like I think my dad's been talking about retiring my uncle says since the first time he met him so like this is like (laughs) my dad's been looking forward to retirement for so long it was so funny he was like because I'm at home right now for Thanksgiving and he was like um oh I can come on the podcast if you want if you want to introduce your dad I was like I don't Bring know him in. <laughs> I was like I don't know if like that's like what the target audience is here but um he he's always like yeah you know how does it feel you're just getting started you got 40 years ahead of you I'm oh almost done I'm like thanks for the reminder right like, like, wait, those I are, wish I were you yeah <laughs> those are not the things we need to hear right now I know and it's so funny too because I don't know if you feel this way but I had it in my head that I was going to be a career woman like that was my brand that's how I felt I that's how I identified I was like I don't want anything else in my life I just really want to like my job and I want to make that you know like what I'm all about and then I got to be a working gal and I was like this is fucking stupid like I think <laughs> I don't know. And like work still matters. I certainly don't want to hate my job, but like, first of all, very, that's, that is capitalism winning that girls just want to become these little career empires. I don't know. It's so funny. Like these girl bosses. (laughs) Literally. It is, it is the girl bossification (laughs) happening live and in the flesh. And I was like, why would I ever do that to myself? Working sucks. Even if you like your job, it sucks. It so does and I got Sam I got really deep into some like left wing um like propaganda I would say about like (laughs) like, everyone like quit their jobs like it's a great resignation like we can all have it all and I should have did quit my job like I went so hard into that um but I'm like it but it's just I feel exactly the same way it's like I don't I don't know how happy I would be like not having a job but at the same time, I'm not happy having a job. God, and so I don't know win. what the answer is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And like I, my job still matters enough to me that like I want to be doing something. Well, and it's so dumb too, because I don't know what it is about. Like I, I just like have been drawn to agency life. And I just feel like, because that's one of those careers where you talk about it and people get it and it feels important, which is kind of silly. Um, cause really when you think about it, I'm just like running social media accounts for brands. Like it's kind of ridiculous, but at the same time, I like it. It's like falls in line with my skill sets. That's all you can really ask for. But then sometimes I'm just like, you know, at the end of the day, like what is work really doing for me? Like, what is the return that I'm getting? <laughs> Don't know. Girl, that was the topic of all my videos. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> like, you need a job that this was this one girl that I love. I think her name's like Lynette or something. She was so cool. But she was like, <laughs> you want a job that like you are getting more from them than like you're giving to them. And I feel like agencies is like the antithesis of that. It's oh, like 100%. they they're obsessed with your time. Like you're working, like you're spread so thin working on so many different projects. And it's like then you ask for like a little bit more and they're like, whoa, whoa, what the, what the fuck? Like this yeah. isn't how <laughs> this is supposed to go. Um, which is hard because there are like some good things about, I think working at agencies, especially when you're young is it's like you, there are a lot of young people. It does seem like a pretty good place to make friends. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It's so, it's just so hard. I'm like, I kind of like the idea of being like a job woman instead of a career woman where it's like, I always have something that I'm doing, but maybe it's not like climbing the corporate ladder, you know, like right. maybe it's like, we're like selling cards or something at a local boutique. I really like I always <laughs> I love that it. It's so lovely. <laughs> I know. No, totally. For sure. I like that little saying as well. Maybe that's going to become our new motto. Because <laughs> 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 but no, I totally feel that. And it's just, I feel like it's also so different now to something about working um, like post COVID, just like the way people think about work is so different. And yet nothing has really changed either. Like we're all just like pissed that we're working, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is fine. I don't know. We're kind of pissed about lots of things, but, but I am excited for you for your new job. I mean, that is just nice. And, and health insurance is always good. So. <laughs> health insurance is always good. The name of this episode. <laughs> and hey, if you, maybe, you know, you would love Kansas city. Like maybe this is your place. Yeah. And we can both like <laughs> have a friend. That would be so wonderful. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to start doing some research the second that we hang up. <laughs> But no, this is good. And I'm just excited to touch base with you again. I mean, it's been a little while since I've seen you. I was actually just talking to Kelsey and Lauren. We obviously need to start planning our next reunion. It can't come soon enough. I also just feel like, I don't know, I'm ready to travel. I want something on the books to look forward to. So. Oh, absolutely. It's all about, you know, that little carrot that just like gets you through yes. every day, which is definitely trips with you gals. That is like, it's always so fun. So I don't know if we should do like East Coast because we've never all been out to New York yeah, together. True. That which would be would really be fun. fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just yeah. feel like that would be quite the time. I can already imagine all the things that we would get into. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I just love it. I'm excited for the next time we can all get together. Maybe we even plan something for like spring or something. Um, of course, you would you'll be moving around then, so maybe you'll have to get settled first, and then we can start talking about it. Oh, I mean, I, I'm just so thrilled to be like closer than two hours away from a major airport so I feel like once I move I'm gonna be like planning trips everywhere in the world so like it could not this planning could not come at a better time perfect then all the raise is going to airfare that's what's happening (laughs) here (laughs) well amazing I'm glad we got the chance to do this and you obviously have to come on my podcast again soon you're so funny to me because you're one of the most positive people I can think of but in this way where you're still really good at complaining so (laughs) I don't know exactly what that means but it is a compliment (laughs) Sam I really feel like you like speak to my soul because that's 100% how I identify I'm like I like to think I'm not like a miserable presence but like everything I say is really negative (laughs) I feel like maybe it's just because we followed up with giggles you know like that's all that you can really do amen yes that is (laughs) that is absolutely how it is (laughs) well thank you Abby and thank you guys for listening I love you all and I will chat with you again next week another cathartic convo in the books i feel better how about you thank you so much for listening now i just want to jump on here and say don't forget to follow and or subscribe to the pod on your favorite streaming platform for new episodes every single week because i know you can't get enough of me additionally if you want to gain access to exclusive episodes and behind the scenes bloopers and lots of other goodies join our patreon and support the pod with your hard-earned american dollars you can find the link in our show notes or you can also visit us at patreon.com slash pessimistic at best and of course don't forget to follow us on instagram at pessimistic at best and if you're as obsessed with me as i am with you you can find me at sam georgeson on all platforms and last but not least i'd like to give a special shout out out to my podcast editor and producer, the love of my life, James Arbae, whom I literally could not do this without. So thank you, James. I love you so much. And thank you guys for joining me again this week. I love you too. And I cannot wait to chat with you again soon.